This old brute of a thing belongs to my friend Tony. He's been messing with it over many years, culminating in a bigger engine, really. It's a 4.3 instead of a 3.5. He's always had issues with it, though. And uh, it seems that the old 3.5 ECU and flapper just can't run that big engine, basically. It gets too lean, like really lean. So I've been helping him out with it for a few years, and it finally comes to the conclusion he needs to send the ECU off to Mark Adams, who's um, from Tornado Systems, specialises in this thing, uh, really, uh, this old ECU and lots of other Rover V8 ECU. And uh, he's, he sent it back with now a 4.2 Jaguar flapper airflow meter and an updated ECU. Here it is. Look, it's pretty cool. And um, with that came the instructions on how to set it up on a rolling road. So we've only got two things we can do, really. We can swing the timing and uh, we can mess with the fuel pressure. So, um, yeah, the characteristics of the ECU and the engine are pretty well matched now. But essentially, we have to up the fuel pressure a little bit to get the fueling uh, right where it should be. That was the purpose of today with the rolling road and, uh, and Tony's car, to set the fueling up and to, set, um, to swing the distributed timing and see if we can find best power uh, and learn a little bit about the engine, really. Here we go. Caveat with all this, you'll be screaming at the camera saying, rev it more, is that uh, we don't really go much beyond 5,000 revs. Uh, due to whatever reasons, there are some bad valve springs, some very old uh, valve springs in there. And we've cracked one, we've actually fractured a valve spring um, just in a few months back uh, while sort of driving it rather enthusiastically. So we're not going to be revving it to six. I don't know actually what the rev limit is on the SD1, but um, it's only 5,000, but we do find peak power. We go beyond peak power. I think it's about 4,008 to 5,000 RPM, depending on the, the timing. Um, so we do find it, but we, we could have gone a lot further, but we wouldn't have made any more power. So yeah, there we go. That's what we're, that's what we're working with today. What, what, what's the result of that then, Lawrence? Well, I was limited to four and a half thousand revs there. The torque curve is a is a very flat torque curve. You can probably see it there. Beautiful flat red line there. Yeah. The power is climbing all the way, and it's still climbing at four and a half thousand when I let off the throttle. So there's a lot more power to be had. The result was 183 horsepower, and the fueling is a little bit lean. We could do with putting a little more fuel in, really. Uh, so I think we up the fuel pressure, and we do another run, and we can go further up the revs if you want to. So what was the lambda figure when you uh, looked at it? It's, it's, it's around about one, basically. And no. at full throttle, it should be closer to 0 0.9. Yeah, so, so we need about 10% more fuel. It's quite a bit out then, it really. Yeah, it's it, good for economy. You're new, new to... <laughs> but you could use a little bit more fuel, yeah. I, either adjust the flapper or the fuel pressure. I think we do the fuel pressure. That's what Mark said we should do. Yeah. We should do it with, with fuel pressure. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. 5,000 reps. It sounded good though. I think it wants more, but I don't. I don't know if we do that really. We could try, try modifying the ignition. Yeah, we can mess with that. What, what's the fuel the lambda sensor now? It looks good. It's, uh, it's hovering about 0.9. Oh. Yeah. Bang on then. Yeah, we could we could go a little richer. This is the lambda on the on the on the scale on the right here. You can see it was lambda one, which is about 14.7. And now it's dropped to 0.9, so we're closer to sort of 13 now, uh, which is better. Some instability has been introduced. The first Lambda was quite a, a nice stable line, but this one has some waves in it. Now, this is a closed ECU. We can't get in and see what it's doing. But you see during that run, we also had a misfire here. So one of the set, one of the eight cylinders, that's about seven eighths if you look up the torque curve, one of the cylinders is not working. And then it begins to join in about 2,200 to 2,300 RPM. Uh, again, we don't know why there's a misfire. There's a lot of old components on here. Leads, plugs, um, distributor cap, coil. Um, lot of, there's a lot of reasons. Loose connections here, there and everywhere. So uh, that could have introduced this wavy line here. This isn't too bad. It's still, um, it's, you can see it's better than it was. Even though we've introduced the wavy line, we're much closer to where we should be now. So really, I'd like to see a line that stable um, down at 0.85. Um, but this is acceptable for whatever reason. Uh, this misfire, yeah, so that cylinder joined in then, and from now, at this point on, you can see the red line is just a fraction above the pink line, and really it begins to show uh, a, a vast improvement up above 4,000 RPM where that gap starts to open up, look. Uh, and then this obviously is because we revved the car further. We made more power on that run because we revved it further, 
So the, we, we pretty much reached peak power there at 4,900. You'll see in subsequent runs, it begins to drop off after that. So the fueling improvement we made, here it is, gave us this result, an increase in torque um, of, I don't know, some 10 probably foot pounds, which is quite healthy. So what are you going to do now then, Lauren? Well, we, we had a bit of a misfire up to 2,500 revs, and then you can see the torque curve jumps up again and it joins in that last cylinder. So you know, we'll run it again and see if that's going to behave itself. And also the power, it was still making power, so we can go a little bit beyond five and a half, or sorry, five up to, towards five and a half thousand revs uh, to find peak power, that's all. Okay. Yeah. But we're, we're a little nervous because there's some very old valve springs in there, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, otherwise you should be fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, let's give it a go. Okay. Hi, Lawrence. So, what happened this time? 198, just the same. Yeah. So uh, we we must have reached exactly peak power on the last run. Yeah. The previous run, sorry. And on this run, we've we've gone beyond it. So yeah, it's 198 horsepower. We've got we've up the fuel pressure too. Two. We've got the pressure, yeah, from about 38 or 9 to about 41 or 2. The yeah. gauge moves a little. You can see here that lambda line is still a little bit wavier than the first power run we did. Um, and I just want to clarify, I can't blame the ECU at all for this. The, the ECU produced good uh, stable fueling. It was it was um, stable at least for the first run. So it's not an ECU issue. That what, I, what I was saying about we can't see what the ECU is doing is we, we can, um, if we could get into that ECU, like, with an aftermarket, we could actually assess what the inputs and output signals are and try and identify where that's coming from. It's certainly not the ECU's fault, but um, at this point, because it's a closed ECU, uh, we we just we can speculate really. You'd be interchanging parts and so on. So I think it might be because we've upped the fuel pressure, the fuel pressure, uh, that that's when the problem occurred. Then uh, it's possibly the fuel pump um, is uh, is at the limits of what it's capable of, or the uh, fuel pressure regulator. Really, those are the only things we changed, unless a bad signal from a sensor uh, coincidentally ha um, occurred at the same time, you know. Yeah, so there it is. We're stuck with that fueling for the time being, at least. I think it's probably the fuel pump at the edge of what it's capable of. But yeah. That should be fine now. I can check that on this next run and we can be done with the fueling then. Um, and we've, ad we've advanced the ignition. So Mark Adams recommends about 28 degrees at 4,000 revs with the vacuum off. Uh, but I want to be working from idle because it's something Tony can set up more easily at home. Uh, so we did have 10 degrees, we just put it up to 13 degrees at idle. Uh, so we're going to do a run now and see if that increases the torque and power. Right, yeah. okie doke. Have you got any results? Yeah, very interesting. It is actually, it has only affected the very top end. The torque, the torque remains the same right the way up to four and a half thousand revs. Uh, so there's no advantage to it at all up until that point. And from then on, it makes a little more torque. The torque curve creeps above the older result and the power continues to climb up to about 5,200. There might even be a benefit to revving it. So more. it was 198. 198 before, before. what is it now? 207. He's taking out the lambda sensor now from the exhaust. So now this is the result of um, 15 degrees static advance at on, idle. On, yeah. at idle. Yeah. And um, we haven't altered the flapper no. and we've put the fuel pressure up to 42, just about. Yeah. And what's the, yeah. what's the BHP now then? Well, it's uh, just a fraction down at 203 horsepower. Right. Uh, so it's losing something at the very top end. So you can see that misfire returns on this run. Um, again, during the day, we didn't really get to figure out why that was. Um, but the cylinder joined in again. It came in and out of the various runs. But So in this time, we've got the advance set very far. Okay, 15 degrees at idle was too much, and we've actually found a drop now. So you see the red line is below the previous run, which is in pink. And again, um, it's 
the effect is is greater above 4000 rpm with this particular engine so the power has dropped as well of course so regarding advancing the ignition in, in a perfect world you'd compress your mixture to the top top dead center then you would um, ignite that com and combustion would occur and then when all of the fuel mixture is burned and the temperature is raised it pushes the piston down which would be ideal you can extract masses of work from that uh, from that fluid then but of course uh, it takes time so if you spark uh, if you ignite your combustion chamber you ignite your uh, mixture sorry at top dead center it takes a period of time for it to burn so the piston can be way down the bore before all of that mixture has burned it's a smooth flame that spreads throughout the mixture you see um, so of course there's an advantage to, to igniting it earlier so if you ignite it as the piston's coming up, the pressure is building and that piston is having to work a little bit harder to get to top dead centre, but not much of the mixture has burned by the time it reaches top dead centre. But you've got the process underway. Now, by the time the piston is coming down the bore, a lot more of that mixture has burned uh, but, uh, and you're going to be able to extract more work out of that fluid. You're wasting less of it, basically. So there's an advantage to getting ahead of the game and sparking earlier in the cycle. Of course, there comes a point where you've ignited that mixture so early uh, that the piston is having to push really very hard now against uh, a burning mixture uh, and you begin to lose power then. Um, so you can see uh, we've, that's what we've reached that point. With this particular engine, we've reached a point where we've, uh, we've advanced the spark so much we're beginning to lose power again. So we know we've found it. For my buddy Tony here, uh, he's going to set his to about 12, 13 degrees at idle, something he can do without annoying his neighbours. And... Um, uh, and he'll know he'll, he'll have best torque from that engine. Yeah. Uh, of course, this is quite a big, low compression, lazy, low revving engine. So we're not um, we're not running into knock, but in some cases, more high, basically more higher compression engines, you run into knock uh, before you get to best torque. So you advance your spark and you make more torque, and you advance your spark and you continue to make more torque. You advance your spark further, and then you begin to get that uncontrolled. Uh, actual explosion of the mixture in the chamber which is called detonation and obviously will destroy your engine so this was not a detonation limited engine we just found best talk um, on, on this occasion here yeah. okay so what we've done now then Lawrence we put the Vitesse 3.5 distributor in yes which is standard we haven't yeah. modified it at all no and we've set it how many degrees have uh, we set just it at 12, uh, 12 degrees idle yeah uh, for the time being we will do a run and see what we're looking to find. I think we can always find peak power with any distributor, really, but we're looking to see if the, um, the torque is any different in the lower RPM. So we should be able to find the same 230 foot-pounds and the same 205 or so, 6 uh, horsepower. But so we want to know if Tony's going to get any more out of the car at 2,000 revs with this uh, more standard distributor, that's all. Yeah, so we're really comparing two distributors, <laughs> yeah. one from the TVR yeah. 450 yeah. and one from the VTES 3. 0.5. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right we can then. swing the timing again to find the best performance out of this one. Okay. And then see what the torque curve is like low down. Okay. You ready? Right, so we're now looking at the results of changing the distributor to the uh, Vitesse, and uh, Lawrence is going to tell us what it's doing. There's nothing in it. Nothing in it? <laughs> nothing. It's exactly the same. <laughs> the, the, the two lines are completely overlaid. Yeah. There is nothing in it. Ah, well, there we are. There's no difference. No at difference. All. But, like, it's, let's stress that we're only revving to 5,200. Yeah, well, you're and, not um, going to rev it to 6,000 today. No, I mean, you need, you need better springs in there, and yeah. that's probably all you need, yeah. really. But if I look at this, uh, there'll be a rev limiter probably at around about 6,000. So. Yeah. If I continue to rev it, the, the ECU will stop the, sending the, a spark out at that point. But we don't want to rev it there because we know we've got weak valves. The, the, there's a rev limiter behind the camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 5,200 is all yeah, I've done. Yeah, yeah. So, like, there's more horsepower to be had here, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe 210, 220 um, for revving it some more. And if you had a special piston there four, and balance crank and all that stuff, you know, you could rev it to, to six and a half maybe. Yeah. You'd make a lot then. But to, right, yeah. But we're not, we're not, we haven't got those components, so we're not going to do it today. Yeah, yeah. And so I want to stress that that twin plenum or that three and a half litre distributor and the TVR distributor might have a different effect up at 6,000 revs, but we're not seeing it up and no, up to no, 5,000. Makes no difference, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so you, fantastic. You're sort of done, I think, really. That the, We swing the timing and the torque doesn't change much, so that'll do, <laughs> that'll do. And uh, of course, well, the next time we do it, we've, we've got a 4.6 yes, 4.6 to go uh, in, yeah. TVR uh, yeah. engine to go in. Yeah. And uh, 
That TVR engine is a um, what do they call what top flat top? Uh, it's, a, it's a top hat block. Top hat top block. Top hat liners. Yeah. Very very good it's condition. Got pocketed pistons, isn't it? Uh, with a uh, with a 4.2 yeah. camshaft. Yeah. Uh, otherwise standard heads. Yeah. And we'll have a standard yeah, yeah. Uh, distributor on it, yeah, so yeah. we'll see yeah, how yeah. that compares yeah, with yeah. with this. Yes, um, yeah. So I, I imagine, well, you're making a nice flat torque curve here, up to 5,000 revs, you're still making over 200 foot-pounds. I think with the 4.6, with the skinnier runners, you'll probably make more torque down the bottom, definitely because you've got bigger capacity, but also because you've got slightly skinnier runners. But it'll run out of puff above 4,000. It'll this this engine will overtake it yeah. above 4,000, I imagine. But we, it remains to be seen. So another exciting project to come, really. Yeah. 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 Stand by for yeah, yeah part two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've had a very productive day. I think we've got it all done in three hours. It's very uh, clever yeah. what you've done, and um, oh, you're very it's kind. It's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Amazing yeah. The technology that you know. <laughs> I, I brought, <laughs> I brought up in I brought up in the late 50s and 60s. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so. Yeah. It's all new to me. It's and distributors. It's been a fantastic day. Yeah, it's been good fun, hasn't it? So, um, anyway, I hope you get a bit of business from this. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, we'll get it on YouTube. Yeah. And, uh, we might gain some interest. Yeah, we're based, yeah. well, this machine can be brought here to an industrial site not a million miles from Western Supermare, uh, where I can set it up. And if anyone else wants similar work doing, we can, we can do that here.